Welcome everyone, today is going to be a short tutorial on the semaphore. Primarily I want to explain this concept before doing a tutorial on channels, so this is going to be a prerequisite. So without wasting too much time, let's just jump into it and get one thing straight that the semaphore is for solving the synchronization between threads problem. Okay, so it's not as scary as it sounds like. Semaphore stands for those guys with flags that go right but and if you google it you will see it but essentially i don't like thinking of it like that it doesn't build a really fulfilling image for me it's more of a, like a gate for me to the city right where the city is the process okay so uh let's go ahead and uh, do like a quick simulation okay so we're gonna start here and uh, we are going to do some work okay and then we're gonna finish Okay, so we run this, uh, all is good, start to do some work, nothing too complicated here. What we now want to do is we want to put a gate on the process. So let's say you're not allowed to enter here, right? And we're going to start with zero. We're basically going to say, right, this is a city and no one is allowed to go there. Okay, so that's what the gate is going to be like. So here we're going to introduce a semaphore slim. There is semaphore and semaphore slim. Semaphore is there for backwards compatibility. So don't use semaphore, use semaphore slim, okay? It's the newer implementation and it's better, lightweight, or faster, or whatever. Right, and we're gonna call it gate because that's the way I think about it, okay? And uh, in the constructor, you have to supply a number, right? And zero is the amount that are allowed to go through the gate, okay? So uh, when we start, uh, what do we? How, how do we utilize the gate, right? So what we do is we grab the gate and we say wait async right so we're gonna wait till we are allowed to enter and uh, for this you can see that this is asynchronous so it's basically a non-blocking wait so the thread is gonna go off and do something else while it's waiting to enter okay so at this point if we run the application we're only allowed to start but we're not allowed to do any work okay so let's say we are allowing one person to go in right so he goes in and does some work nice so uh, let's put this in a loop and uh, just kind of get an idea of how we can allow the next person to enter after one person has already entered, right? So we're going to have 10. Let's go ahead and put the loop here. Okay, so uh, we're going to run this again and you will see that we get a start, do some work, finish in the second person that's trying to enter. Uh, the limit here has an incremented backup after finish so this is what we want to do as soon as we wait async this number will drop to zero so this is the limit one person is in the process we now have to tell the people who control the gate essentially the gate itself that somebody has left the the, the building basically right they came they did some work and then they finished they left the building right and here we're saying only one person is allowed in the building what we could do is we could just go ahead and straight up increase this to 10 and everybody would be uh, doing all the work, all these 10 people that were spawning. But essentially what we want to do is we want to say, right, no, only one person is allowed to do the work in the building because it's a very, very small building, right? And we need to notify the next person when he's allowed to come in, right? And because this is an asynchronous operation, the thread is going to go off to do some other work, right? Is like somebody's going to turn up to the building and he's going to be like, can I do some work? No? Okay, I'm gonna go uh, have a cup of coffee or something. So, uh, the way we actually do it without rambling on for too long, uh, eh, we just go ahead and call release, okay? So, we decrement the number that we do here with wait async by allowing somebody to go and do some work, and then we increment it back up by calling release, okay? So, this kind of gives you a, if I put this back to 10, right? Everybody does the work, but as uh, you've seen here, we're only allowing one person in the building, okay, to do that work. And this is not a very compelling real world example. And I will give you a real world example right now, okay, where you do want this thread synchronization. And uh, the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to create an HTTP client. And this is a real world problem I have to solve. So uh, you have an HTTP client. Let's go ahead and create the client. We're also going to grab this gate as well. All right, we're not going to use it yet, but we're going to have it here. 
and this is going to be a new HTTP client. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have a public async task. What are we going to do? We're going to call Google. Okay, uh, let's do this. And we are going to have a response. So we're going to grab the client and we're going to get async. Calling Google here. Nice. We're going to wait here. Okay, and uh, then for the response, we want to go ahead and uh, grab the status code and just dump it. Okay, uh, one thing. So basically, I'm calling Google here. I know I haven't explained the problem, but essentially what I'm going to show you here is we're going to make a ton of requests to the client and we're going to see some surprising behavior from the timeout. Okay. So we're going to blast the client and the requests are going to time out before they're actually made, right? So it, when we call get async, that's not what the, when the request is actually made by the network card, that's when we call the function and uh, the timeout starts from the moment we call the function and your network card or the amount of ports that are open to a process is going to limit how fast you can grab those requests. Okay. So we're going to basically blast the client. And we're going to see requests timing out before they can even be made. Okay. So uh, how do we do this? So let's go ahead and create an enumerable where we're going to yield some tasks. And uh, let's go ahead and say create calls. And here for, let's say, like 2000. I think 2000 will be enough for me. Or actually, I don't want to spam Google. Let's opt in for 200 and we're just going to put a really, really small timeout. And we're going to see how we can use the semaphore to regulate the threads that are going in to call this client. Okay, so let's go ahead and yield return calls Google here. And not calls, but rather call Google. And this is a semicolon. And then in here, we just want to task wait all and create calls okay and i guess we can go ahead and to array this so one thing i want to do here is let's grab the timeout and i will say new uh, or other time span and from seconds i'm just gonna put five right so we have five seconds for the request to complete and let's say i will put this to 10 first it doesn't matter for the content that we get back. It just matters that these requests get completed, right? So you can see all of the status codes are okay. Let's go bump this up back to 200 and let's see what happens. And actually complete. So my network card is uh, fast enough. Let's go ahead for 500. Okay. And uh, here is where you will see an exception of a task was canceled. So a little bit of a friendlier way that we can uh, uh, tackle this as let's say let's just put a try catch around this whole thing here let's Say I want to catch the exception e and I will just grab the message and dump it right so we're just gonna know at some point we are gonna if I remember how to type uh, at some point, we're just going to start hitting exceptions because stuff gets cut, t timed out. So the error is not specifically too helpful either. We're just going to the operation. Uh, we're going to start seeing the operation was canceled. So essentially what we want to do is we want to complete all 500 requests and not get the operation was canceled. So what, and to restate the problem, what you're seeing here is we create 500 tasks, right? And we basically kick off all 500 tasks. And the computer is so fast to call this function because one thread comes in and then it basically, all right, a uh, network card, go fetch this. And then 500, that happens 500 times. The network card can't do it that fast. So this function is called 500 times, but the network card is only processing maybe like 10 or 20 requests, okay? So the timeout starts from the time you actually call the function, not from when the network card starts working. So that's when the task uh, canceled operation is triggering from. So what we want to do here is this is the process that we want to guard. Okay. So here, when we have the gate, we're guarding some work, right? So we're protecting somebody from entering the building to do some work. 
and then we're releasing. So this is exactly what we want to do here. And we want to essentially throttle how many requests can be made. So we want to grab the gate and uh, we're basically going to say, right, wait for um, some free space so we don't blast the client. So not all of our requests start timing out. Okay. And then we're going to grab the gate again and we're going to say, right, once we actually produce the result or we've actually finished the request, so I can actually put it here. Uh, let's go ahead and just release. Okay. And here, uh, this is again, this is a depend. this depends on your computer, you can fine tune this. And usually if you use it, do this on local development, if you then put it on the client on the cloud or something like that, it might have more network ports. But again, this is more of a specific issue with the HTTP client and how it works. Uh, at this point, uh, calibrating the semaphore is a trial and error kind of thing. So you have to test it, you have to figure out what's good, what's not, uh, put logs, etc. So let's go ahead, start with something like 20, right? So can we handle 20 calls to Google? Right, let's go ahead and see this. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so you can see all the calls have, been, have gone okay. So what you could do is you could go overboard and you could say, right, we are gonna allow 100 calls to go through the gate and maybe at some point you are still going to see some operations cancelled. So this is what you want to test for when you're calibrating this number. You can see most of them are good, but some of them are still timing out and cancelling. So this is when you want to put the gate down, up, and usually, again, this will just depend on the machine that you're working on. But yeah, this is essentially the semaphore and what it does is protects a certain process asynchronously okay and as i explained it's like a gate and that's the way i like to think about it not the person with the flags giving signals it's more of a just a gate to the city right if you enjoyed this tutorial uh, leave a like subscribe don't forget to leave a comment if you have any questions also join the discord server i also do live streams on uh, sundays and wednesdays so don't forget to join in for that links are in the description and hopefully i'll see you in my other videos